All right, good morning and welcome. It's Corporate Governance Platform brought to you by the Institute of Chartered Secretaries and Administrators of Nigeria, Ixan. I am Fumi Omoburiu. Let me remind you that Ixan is dedicated to enhancing the status and practice of corporate governance and administration. On the program this morning, we want to look at the role of external auditors on integrity of corporate uh, governance. And our guest uh, this morning uh, joins us, of course, uh, from River State. Uh, she is Mrs. Selin Okoroma Vincent, uh, ACIS uh, Vice Chairman. River State Chapter of Ixan, uh, Compliance and Governance Advisor, Paraclet Consulting, and Ixan licensed uh, firm of chartered secretaries and administrators based in Port Harcourt, Nigeria. Good morning, Mrs. Okuruma Vincent. Good morning, Mrs. Fumi. Good morning, listeners. Right. I bring you greetings from the Treasure Base of Nigeria. I'm grateful to God and the Institute for the opportunity to share my thoughts on the issues we'll be discussing this morning. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. Also on the program this morning is Mr. Kaudi Ketefe, Head of Research, uh, Ixan. Good morning, Mr. Ketefe. Good morning, Fumi. Good morning to you, our guests, and all our listeners. All right. Let's take this message. We'll be right back. The world is constantly evolving into a knowledge-based economy where skills and competencies constitutes the lifeblood of public and corporate governance. You therefore need to empower yourself to fit into this new world by gaining basic knowledge and improving your skill set in the governance-focused disciplines. That is why every aspiring as well as practicing professional in governance field needs Ixan. Ixan? What is Ixan? Ixan is a leading statutorily established professional body dedicated to enhancing the status and practice of corporate governance and public administration. Ixan members are trained as chartered secretaries and administrators. Who are chartered secretaries and administrators? Chartered secretaries are high-ranking governance professionals with a broad base of skills, unique amongst other professions. They are trained in law, finance, accounting, administration, strategy development and corporate governance. In today's world, chartered secretaries and administrators discharge a wide range of duties and responsibilities, including functioning as chairmen of companies, executive directors, non-executive directors, company secretaries, risk managers, compliance managers, board evaluators, and corporate governance evaluators. That is interesting. How then do I become a chartered secretary and administrator? Good. Go to the Institute's website, www.ixan.org. You can also visit the National Secretariat of Ixan at Plot 6, Elephant Cement Way, Alausa Ikeja, Lagos, to get full information on how to become members. Ixan, the hub of governance professionals. All right, uh, we're looking at role of external auditors in the context of uh, corporate governance. All right, uh, Mrs. Okuruma Vincent, let's look at um, you know external auditors, who they are, their roles and functions. Uh, let's look at that. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Fumi. Um, we can't really digress into the role and functions of external auditors without speaking about the principal marketing document of a company, which is the annual report and accounts of the company. Now, the annual report is a statement of the financial position and performance of a company in the year under review, and it's actually the principal major which directors of a company give an advice and account of their stewardship to the stakeholders of the company. Now, the information contained in this annual report and associated statement is usually relied upon by investors because it's used to determine the financial health and viability of the company. And because this annual report is heavily relied upon, it has become imperative, particularly for public companies, for this annual report to be audited and reviewed by independent external auditors. Now, the function of the independent external auditors as regards financial reporting is to assess the financial statements prepared by the board 
and ensure that the information provided therein is not just objective, is reliable, honest, and devoid of any fraudulent or misleading information, or probably any hidden information that isn't disclosed by the board. If we put it in context of a university environment, when you do your final year thesis and it's submitted, the university usually invites external um, examiners to review the thesis and ensure that the things that are supposed to be within the thesis have been complied with. So in the context of an organization, the external auditors have that supervisory function over the annual reports and statement published by, by both of the directors of a company every year. Uh, all right. So let's look at the link uh, between external audit functions and risk management. Okay. Thank you so much for me for that um, very interesting question. Um, because there really is a link between risk management and the function of external auditors. Because it will try to explain what risk management is. is a process whereby organizations methodically understand, analyze, and address the risks attached to the business activities with the goal of maximizing the opportunities that arise and also taking leverage of the benefits while mitigating the crisis that may arise within any given business activity. Now, if you'll agree with me that in today's business reality, the business environment is quite unpredictable and companies have been forced to incur risk in order to sustain business continuity. If we look at the classical case during the pandemic, at the point, Apple, the, their Asian production had to take hold on their phone production to delve into healthcare and also produ producing materials for COVID prevention. That was very strategic in terms of ensuring that there's business continuity, but then they have to also weigh the risk and identify the opportunities and leverage on it to ensure that there is returns maximization for their stakeholders. Now, in terms of the board, this is the responsibility of the board to undertake this proper assessment of risk involved in every business activity. It's the board's responsibility to accurately weigh the risk versus the rewards that may arise in the business activity. The board is also required to set the limits, implement appropriate responses to every risk ex exposure. Now, this entire process of risk analysis can be documented and formulated in a risk governance framework for the company. Now, research has shown that majority of business catastrophic failures are often as a result of organizations not putting risk into proper perspective or the managed risk improperly. Now, where the role of the external auditors comes into risk management and how it aligns into risk management is that the external auditors provide an independent assurance by objectively assessing the risk governance framework of the company and its business activities to certify whether the actions and processes and even the control systems put in place to manage risk, whether this particular process have really gone ahead to manage risk and enhance the value of the company or these processes and actions put in place have devalued the risk framework of the organization. Now, these external auditors, they basically provide risk oversight functions to ensure that all the processes and the risk governance framework put in place were effective to ensure that the risk is mitigated and then it does not lead to a corporate failure. That's the relationship between external audit functions and risk management within an organization. Uh, all right, great. Uh, now, how does external, I mean, how would an external auditor ensure the integrity of uh, the financial statement? Okay, I'll just um, give a brief run through for purpose of understanding of how their function really outplays within an organization. Now, after the board prepares the financial statements, it's the responsibility of the auditors to review the annual statements to ensure the integrity of the financial statements. And they do this by carrying out the function of investigating the company's control system, the structures that the organization has put in place, the accounting systems, the financial and business transaction. They do an analysis to look at the structure to ensure that what the organization has presented in its annual report is actually a true reflection of what the state of the organization is. Now, after this review is done, the external auditors come up with an expert opinion, which is usually presented in the form of a report. And this report is also included in the published annual report and accounts of the company. Now, this auditor's report has two main purposes. One of it is to give an expert and independent opinion on whether the financial statements gives a true and fair view of the financial position of the company. Now, the second purpose of this auditor's report is to give an expert and independent opinion on whether the financial statement actually comply with relevant laws and accounting standards. 
Now, this external auditor's professional um, opinion sort of gives an, a reassurance to people who rely on this um, published statements that the information in the financial statements are true and reliable, and that at each instance, this information are things that actually provide a real picture of the company's financial position. And I must also guide um, the listeners. It's not at every point in time when the external auditors may give a positive review. There are times where possibly, because of the investigation, there may be things that the organization has not projected in the published report. So there may be also dissenting opinions as regards the position of the organization in the auditor's reports. All right, let's quickly look at the, the provision of the code uh, that recommends uh, appointment, reappointment or removal of uh, external auditor be made by committee responsible for audit uh, to the board. Uh, why is this provision important in uh, the governance context? Okay, thank you. This is a very excellent question. Um, as a matter of fact, the relevant uh, provision of that um, um, prescription is in the Code of Corporate Governance under Principle 20. And it provides that the appointment, re removal, and the reappointment of external auditors should be made by the audit committee, which is re the committee responsible for audit purposes within the board. Now, the audit committee is one of the operating committees within the board because when you have a, a board of, of directors, there are several functions that the board executes. So for the purpose of ensuring that all the functions, there are no lapses, committees are set up within the board. Now one of such operational committees within the board is the audit committee. And the audit committee is saddled with the responsibility of financial reporting and disclosure. The audit committee is also responsible for oversight functions as regards audits. Now in its relevance in corporate governance is that the corporate governance code prescribes that members of this audit committee should not just be financially um, literate, but they should also have relevant understanding of accounting standards and financial management because that's the only way they can actually do oversight function as regards audit. Now, the other context is that this audit committee is usually prescribed that they be um, um, formed particularly by independent non-executive directors. Now, this requirement is is really guided towards ensuring transparency in the process of selecting external auditors. Because independent non-executive directors are people that don't really have any direct influence within the organization. Okay. They, are, they, are, they, are, they are persons who have, they come once within the organization to sort of give expertise. They are not part of management. So they have, they usually bring an independent view within the organizational activities. Now, this requirement is really guided to, to ensuring that there is transparency in the external, the selection of external auditors. And the presence of independent external um, auditors sort of creates trust in the decision-making process. And these independent external auditors cannot be influenced. So they will usually give, a, they will give their decisions without fear or favor because they are not paid salaries by the organization. And if their, um, their assessment of who the external auditor is would always come out as a um, their judgment is always recognized and trusted right. because of the value that they bring to the organization. All right, thank you so much, uh, Mrs. Selin Okoroma Vincent, ACIS Vice Chairman, River State Chapter Ixan, uh, Compliance and Governance Advisor, Paraclet Consulting, an Ixan licensed firm of charter secretaries and administrators based in Port Harcourt, Nigeria. Thank you for joining us on the program this morning. Thank you. All right, uh, Mr. Ketefe, over to you at this time for some announcements. Thank you very much, Fumi. The announcement we have for you is on the forthcoming ISAN 2021 annual conference, which is just eight days away. ISAN holds 2021 annual conference on September 16, 2021. This is to inform the members of the Institute, professionals in the governance field, and other stakeholders that the Institute of Charter Secretaries and Administrators of Nigeria, ICSAN, will hold this year's annual conference on Thursday, September 16, 2021, at the Muson Center, Onikon, Lagos. The conference, which begins at 10 a.m. prompt, will be held by hybrid method, which means that there are opportunities for either physical or virtual participation. The theme of the conference is African Continental Free Trade Area and national development issues, challenges, and opportunities. 
The theme of the conference is African Continental Free Trade Area after and national development, issues, challenges, and opportunities. There are also three sub themes revolving around after related issues, which are number one, Nigeria infrastructural deficit and African Continental Free Trade Area. What connection, what solutions? The second sub theme is after and the Nigerian manufacturing sector converting challenges to opportunities. While the third sub theme is after a fresh frontier for a data secretary stroke governance professional. An area of system experienced professionals have been lined up as the faculty for this conference to provide deep insight into issues around the teams and the sub team. Participation fees as follows member 50,000 naira, student member 30,000 naira, non member 30,000 naira, senior non member 60,000 naira, senior citizen 15,000 naira, factual participant 40,000 naira. We are looking forward to your participation. For more information, please call Florence on 080. Nine zero six six zero zero two two. Thank you very much. All right, thank you so much, Mr. Kadi CIS head of research, Ixan. All right, we we'll return again right here on corporate governance platform next week, Wednesday, ten fifteen a.m. I am from me or Moburio. Enjoy the rest of the day. <laughs>